All right. So we are working on, as you can see, multiplying radicals using the distributive property. So just a couple quick little recall things. Remember, you can multiply radicals whenever. It does not have to be the same radicals like for our adding and subtracting. You can multiply anything together. You're just going to actually multiply your coefficients together. So x times y gives you x, y. And then you multiply your numbers underneath the radical sign together and that stays under the radical. So anything in front of the radical can be multiplied, anything underneath can be multiplied. So we're just going to take it one step further. So as you can see, I got some parentheses in here. And it's not to confuse you guys, it's simply because you can distribute a radical through a set of parentheses. And the multiplication rules are going to stay the same. So when I multiply radical 2 times radical 5, I'm going to multiply the numbers underneath. And that's going to give me radical 10. And then I distribute the radical to the radical 7 there. So I multiply those. 2 times 7 gives me 14. And then as always, we want to ask ourselves, are there any perfect squares that go into those? And there's not. There's no perfect square that goes into 10. There's no perfect square that goes into 14. So that's just going to stay as our answer there. So moving over here to the next one. Make my, my parentheses a little bit bigger there. So we're going to distribute that radical 3 first, so we would get 2 radical 36. And then times the radical 5, 3 times 5 gives us 15. So those numbers under the radical is what gets multiplied. Now 36 is a perfect square. That would come out of the radical as a 6. But then it's got to be times that 2 that's still there. So we get 12 minus radical 15 as our final answer, because there is no perfect square. That goes into 15. Number three, we're just going to take it one step further. So this time there's three things for you to multiply it by. So we're going to do the radical 2 times 5 radical 2. So that gives me 5 radical 4. Remember, you multiply those numbers underneath the radical. Radical 2 times 3 radical 8. So we get the 3 out front still. 2 times 8 gives us a 16 there. And then also times that for radical 32. 2 times 32 gives me 64. So this time what actually happened is all three of those are now perfect squares. So the square root of 4 is 2. So 5 times 2 gives us 10. Here the square root of 16 is 4. Times the 3 gives me 12. And then the square root of 64 is 8. But times that 4 gives me a 32. And we had that subtraction sign there. So 10 plus 12 is 22, minus 32 gives me a negative 10 as my final answer. So that one actually ended up getting rid of all of the radicals. Number 4, so again, distribute. 3 times 4 gives me 12. 3 times 6 gives me radical 18. And then times the other one, 3 times that 3 gives me a negative 9. 3 times 24 gives us, I want to say it's 72. So then there is a perfect square that goes into 18. It's a 9. 9 comes out as a 3. But times that 12 gives me 36 radical 2. And then with the 72, you can take a 36 out. There are other, other ones, but you always want to take out the largest perfect square, which would be the 36. So 9 times that 6 gives me a 54. So 36 minus 54 gives me a negative 18 radical 2. And that's our final answer for that one. Let's try a few more. So on the back, we don't just have one thing to distribute this time. We have multiple things to distribute. So we've done this just before, just not with radicals. So you do 4 times 4, which gives me 16. 4 times negative radical x gives us negative 4 radical x. Now distribute the positive radical x. That becomes a positive 4 radical x. And then a negative radical x squared. x times x gives us x squared. So then right here in the middle, this negative 4 and this positive 4, those are going to cancel each other out. And then this is a perfect square. Square root of x squared is just x. 
So we get 16 minus x is our final answer for that one. Number six, same thing. So I'm going to distribute my 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times the negative 3 radical 3 is negative 15 radical 3. 5 is not under a radical, so it only gets multiplied by that coefficient in front of the radical. 2 radical 3 times 2 is 4 radical 3. And then 2 radical 3 times 3 radical 3 gives me a negative 6 radical 9. 3 times 3 gives us that 9. So now here, just trying to clean things up, I'm going to combine these two together because those are like radicals, which we learned about last class. And then that 9 comes out of the radical sign as a 3. So 6 times 3 gives us that negative 18. So then negative 8, when I combine my negative 18 with my 10, gives me negative 8 minus 11 radical 3. Two more. So number seven, and that is squared, so we want to write it twice. There we go, wrote it twice because it's squared, so now we do the same rules, distribute. Two radical five times two radical five, and multiply the numbers in front, multiply underneath. And then times the negative seven, so I get negative 14 radical five. And then times negative 7 gives me negative 14 radical 5. And then negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. So the square root of 25 is 5 times that 4 gives me a 20. Combining my radical 5s together, that's where my 28 radical 5 comes from. So then last step, adding our numbers. 69 minus 28 radical 5. And then our last one over here, again, same process. Multiply, that gives me 20 radical 3. Radical 3 doesn't change for that one because that's the only thing under a radical. Multiply here, we get 8 radical 9. And then we're going to distribute with our 1, so that gives me 5. And then plus 2 radical 3. So the square root of 9, that turns into a 3. So I have 20 radical 3 plus 24 plus 5 plus 2 radical 3. So combining my numbers, I get 29. Combining my radicals, we get 22 radical 3. So same multiply procedures, it's just sometimes you got to distribute and then combine your like terms.